Wireless connectivity is everywhere. Whether we're looking up movie times on our smartphones, opening our cars with keyless entry, or getting turn-by-turn -turn directions on our GPS devices, it's a part of our everyday lives, providing entertainment, information, enhancing safety, or increasing productivity. But how does it all work? When two devices are wirelessly connected, they exchange information or data through the air. These two devices can be sharing a direct connection to one another like a pair of walkie-talkies, or they can be part of a larger networked connection, such as when your mobile phone connects with a base station tower or your tablet connects to a local Wi-Fi hotspot. The original brick cell phone weighed two and a half pounds, provided only 30 minutes of talk time, cost $4,000, and used purely analog technology. Today's mobile devices still use radio waves, but use digital technology to communicate to a base station or router. Digital technology allows us to send not just voice, but data, like email, web pages, texts, or the latest music and video. And digital technology uses less power, so your battery lasts longer. So how does your smartphone know the difference between your voice, a text, or other data, and how to send it? Innovative engineers at companies like Skyworks have figured out how to take your voice or email or whatever data you have and convert it to digital bits. That's because many of the things we do every day are analog, but the processor in your smartphone, tablet, computer, or other mobile device only understands digital signals. So the first thing that happens is that a chip converts your analog voice signal into a digital stream of ones and zeros. That string of digital bits is then encoded onto an invisible radio wave called an RF signal. But before the RF signal gets transmitted, it must be amplified. That's because the further an RF signal travels, the weaker it gets. In many cases, the signal must travel miles before reaching the nearest base station. Plus, the signal needs to be strong enough to be accurately decoded. Once the signal arrives at a base station, one of those towers you see with multiple antennas, it sends it to a mobile switching center to determine how to distribute this signal. For example, if the call is to someone's landline, it gets forwarded to the PSTN or Public Switch Telephone Network. If it is to another cell phone, the signal gets routed along until it reaches the nearest base station to the intended recipient's cell phone. <laughs> At the receiving end, the reverse process happens. The digital information is decoded from the RF signal the voice signal is extracted from the digital information and fed into the speaker of the other person's cell phone. This is similar technology all wireless devices use, not just smartphones and tablets, but smart appliances and thermostats, garage door openers and GPS navigation systems in your connected car, and meters that allow utility companies to track your usage remotely instead of sending a meter reader. So anytime you press send on a wireless device, your information is digitized, encoded onto a radio wave, amplified, and sent to a receiver, which decodes and routes it to the proper location at the speed of light. And it's only after decades of innovation in creating more powerful processors, smaller radios, and faster data rate connections that today's wireless devices are able to place powerful communications capabilities in the palm of your hand and create our interconnected world.